Hello, my name is Tom Eisenhower. I'm with Bonifield Financial, and over the next few minutes I'd like to tell you a little bit about agricultural economics and uh, how they differ from the economics of other uh, types of markets, and some of the implications that those differences hold for investors in agricultural commodities and agricultural businesses and in farmland. So let's review for a moment our uh, standard supply and demand curves. We know that as prices rise, uh, fewer goods are demanded. And uh, on the opposite side, we know that as prices rise, uh, more manufacturers want to supply those goods. So we have demand curves that slope uh, downward from the left, and we have supply curves that slope upwards to the right. And where those two curves intersect, uh, we, we have uh, our prices and our quantities established. So you can see that both the supply and the demand curves for agricultural products look very different from the uh, supply and demand curves that we started out with uh, a few moments ago. Both are very inelastic and, uh, and, and this has some uh, serious implications for investors in agricultural businesses and, uh, and commodities and farmlands. The inelasticity of both supply and demand means that agriculture is unusually susceptible to, uh, to shocks to the system. Um, and as it turns out, the world is facing serious shocks to both the supply and the demand side of agricultural products, and these shocks are going to have long-term impacts on the prices for all agricultural goods and services, including farmland. So let's return to our supply and demand curves for a moment and see what impact some of these trends are having on agricultural prices around the world. So let's return to our supply and demand curves for a moment and see what impact some of these trends are having on agricultural prices around the world. Well, the first significant impact is that growing populations, rising incomes in the developing world, uh, and, and increasing meat consumption are actually shifting the demand curve to the right. But you can see, because of the inelastic nature of the supply of agricultural products, as the demand curve shifts to the right, prices tend to increase much more dramatically than the output of agricultural goods do. Compounding this situation is the fact that some of the other trends that we talked about, diminishing yields, water shortages, soil degradation, climate change, are having the effect of shifting the supply curve to the left at the same time that the demand curve is shifting to the right. So the net result of the shift of both of these curves is that we're getting very volatile and increasing prices for agricultural commodities, whereas uh, quantities, the output of agricultural commodities around the world, really isn't changing very much. And so we're seeing increased prices for uh, virtually every major agricultural uh, commodity around the world, as this chart from the OECD and the FAO uh, illustrates that uh, they're projection for, for agricultural prices uh, over the next decade are substantially higher than agricultural prices, say, over the last decade. So in summary, the world is facing serious supply shocks and demand shocks uh, for agricultural products, and because of the inelastic nature of, uh, of both supply and demand uh, in the agricultural sector, uh, these shocks are going to have long-term impacts for prices of all agricultural goods, services, and, and for farmland. So thank you for watching this video. If we've piqued your interest and you'd like to learn more, go to bonafield.com and check out our resources section. There you'll find a more lengthy and detailed version of this video, along with several others covering topics of interest to farmland investors in Canada. Thank you for your time.